I'm Dean. I'm the dad. I'm Laura. I'm the mom. I'm Crystal. I'm the daughter. And together we are Family, Family Plot. Plot. Third time's a charm, so they say. Well, Ooh. seem to be. My goodness gracious. Uh, having trouble getting it to to acknowledge the fact that we were speaking. Kept trying to cut parts of us out. Usually Krista, which I don't think is fair. Not really. She's mm. she's definitely the most attractive of the three of us. Um, uh, yeah, okay, you we can use that. I, I don't necessarily agree because I don't think there's. Wow, well, I find you incredibly attractive, and you find me incredibly attractive. So it would go to reason that the combination of the two of us would be far more attractive. Eh, that makes a certain amount of sense. That's how <laughs> we'll go with it. What? That's how evolution is. That's what. That's learned, right. That's what I learned in science. One. There uh, you go. Previous, previous parents. Uh, One is the loneliest number that you ever heard. You learned that in science. No. Oh. Previous parents of a generation are more likely to. Um. Improve a, their offspring. Impro improve, yeah. Improvement of a certain, like... Oh, uh, I forgot what it's called. Trait? Yeah, trait. Right. There you go. Absolutely. She's learning. Public school's not totally a waste of time. Yeah, well, there you go. Most of the time it is. But That's not true. It's well, not a waste of time. The kids are a waste of time. Well, that may be true. <laughs> welcome to the show. Those of you that are listening, obviously, uh, uh, welcome back if you're one of our listeners. And uh, if you've never listened before, welcome to the show for the first time. Uh, if you want to help us out, you ways you can do that. Uh, obviously, there's our Patreon, uh, three different teams. There's Team uh, Electric Bill, Team Podcast, Team Bunny. Uh Hello doesn't really matter which one you do donate to, which one you pick. It all goes the same place, really. Um, Mostly to feed the bunny and to run the electrics. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't matter which... But either way, it's a 1, 3, 5, and 10. Uh, each level has different stuff that you get. So, uh, you know, just yeah, check it out. Uh, you know, support us any way you can. If you can't afford to do a monthly thing, we get that. Uh, go ahead and you can use our buy me a coffee to do a one time uh, donation. I believe it's whole dollar amounts. So, you know, there you go. There's that. Um, and if you can't do that, well, what we always say is, is if you enjoy the show, share it on social media. If you don't, keep, keep it, it to yourself. yourself. Yes. Thank if you. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Tonight, we go back to 1980 in the tiny town of Skidmore, Missouri, and visit a gentleman by the name of Ken Rex McElroy. McElroy was a criminal and a bully, and 20 trials left him unconvicted, likely because at the time, and still now, Skidmore did not have its own police department. Uh, it, it, it fell under county jurisdiction. So. Fun. Uh, but whatever the case, after shooting 70-year-old Bo Bowenkamp, the local grocer, uh, and allowed to bond out while the new trial was convened, he was shot twice while sitting in his truck. This is the story of the small Missouri town of Skidmore and justice that was finally done or never done, depending on who you believe. This is the story of the bully of Skidmore, Missouri. But first... But first, Krista's Corner. It's 
not just any corner. It's Krista's Corner. Hi, Krista. Hello. Does Welcome Krista to your have corner. a sting? Huh? Does Krista have a sting, or do you have to put that in? I have to put that edit? in. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not tied in. Into this. That's why I put in the claps. Is it? Ah, I gotcha. Put in the sting and everything else. So you just take out the claps afterwards? No, I leave no. them in. And I just he puts in your sting, and then come the claps. He puts it in right before the claps. You see. Actually, I put it in after I I put the claps in after I say Christmas corner. Then I do the rim sh- the the drum roll, and then it's the sting. Christmas weird uh, Christmas corner. Ah. Um. He has a whole process. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pro- I'm procedural. <laughs> okay. I hey, was- Krista, what's going on with you today? I'm just kind of tired. It's been a long day. Yes, ma'am. That's I went I went the, the I have a good part of my day where we went to we went on a hike through um George Owens Nature Park. Cool, cool. Um, you know, our teacher wanted to show us stuff from a certain art artist. Mm-hmm. Can't remember what the name was right now. I think his name was George Owens, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know if George Owens was an artist or, uh, uh, but yeah. Or, or just a guy who did art. Some guys never really, they do art, but they don't consider themselves artists. You know, they're busy being businessmen he's, or craftsmen. He's land, like, life, life art, I think. Something like that. Cool. I see. And did you guys walk from school to the nature park? Because I know it's right over there by your school, so yeah. that's pretty cool. We walked through there. We went through the museum. I took a bowl, bunch of pictures and videos. Awesome. Yeah, yeah you saw a, a snake. I did see a snake. Apparently there was two, but I saw one. And you saw some mammoth bones. I did. And other bones. We can steal the mammoth bones and then make no. our own mammoth. No. Nope. No. Oh. no. There was only, like, a pelvis bone, the half part of the skull and I can't like there was a backbone and then there was one more I can't remember what it was cool well we we just need to get the DNA out of them no we really don't <laughs> but we could beat the company yeah, that's making know. <sighs> y'all are just they would it would die instantly have you seen our climate yeah it's really warm <laughs> mm, well at least this week it has been. Yes, sure has been. And it's and it's not even August yet. Like August, it gets so hot, people shouldn't have to go outside. You're not wrong. Because Missouri, you know. I agree. Dang, my camera look pretty. We look pretty good on my camera. Check it out, babe. Yeah, yeah, we do. We might have to start start uh Start doing some video in to share with our Patreon subscribers. Yeah, that would be a great idea. Absolutely. I, I, I just have haven't, haven't been doing it because. Yeah, my camera is good. Look at that. Look, and there's a Krista arm. There's a crystal arm in my camera. That's so nice. Did you draw that yourself? Yes. That is good work. He's, he's a silly little guy. I named him Sebastian. Very Sebastian's nice. a I good like name. Sebastian. Sebastian's a great, great name. dog. So. All right, Pumpkin Pie, is there anything else that you want to share with the group? No. You sure? <laughs> it's How's almost your... Krista's 14th birthday. Oh, yeah. It's almost my 14th birthday. Yep, we're going to have to do another birthday show with... Not next show. But the show... But the show after will be dropping on the day before your birthday. Mm-hmm. Yep. A few days before my birthday. Hard to believe. Two. It seems like just a couple of shows ago, we were celebrating you finally being 13, and now you're going to be 14. Dad doesn't want me to be 14. I know, but it's going to happen either way, so you might as well deal with it. Sad. 
It's We're okay. Going, dang, counting down the days that Krista's still 13. Uh, I'm not quite doing that, but yeah, I'm, I'm aware. I'm, I'm, I'm strictly aware of how fast you're aging, my child. Yep. That's about it. All That's right. about it. Well, oh. I'm glad you shared about your day, Crystal, and we appreciate you. I love you so much, baby. Wait, here's more clap. <laughs> and an extra one. Just because you're awesome. All right. So, welcome to Skidmore. Skidmore is a small town in Nottoway County, Missouri. Nottoway is a small county very near to Buchanan County, which is home to St. Joseph, Missouri. Much larger town for sure. Yeah. The area was first settled, settled by William Bunton in 1840, shortly after the Platt Purchase opened the area for settlement. Skidmore itself was... Platted. Platted in 1880 when an M. Skidmore donated 20 acres to the Nottoway Rail Company, which was eventually bought out by the Bur by Burlington Northern. The 2020 census placed the town's population at 245 people. That's probably fairly close to where it is now. The local Epis Episcopal Church was put on the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. To this day, Skidmore does not have its own local police, but instead is policed by county sheriffs and lacks their own fire protection district. That being served by the county as well. So, small town. Yeah, it's a farming community. Sure. Yeah. You know, most of the people who live there are farmers uh, or, or work in nearby factories. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, it's a small town. Uh, and so, it, there, there's just not a lot there. They did have their own fire protection district, but it, they closed it down because it was just, there wasn't enough money to fund it. Sure. So they've got a volunteer fire department, so to speak, and then it, which is you know staffed by nothing but volunteers, mm -hmm. obviously. And then uh, they they also uh, are incorporated into the county's fire protection. So makes yeah. sense. So uh, into this town, uh, we're going to introduce the villain of the piece. And clearly, he is. <laughs> Uh, his name is Ken Rex McElroy. Uh, he was born June 1st, 1934, the 15th of 16 children born, born to migrant tenant farmers, Tony and Mabel McElroy. Uh, Mabel's maiden name was Lister, for those of you who care. Uh, the couple moved between Kansas and the Ozarks before settling down just outside of Skidmore. Uh, now, Ken dropped out of school at 15 years old in the eighth grade and went on to become known as a womanizer, a burglar, and a thief, and not in the good D&D &D way. Yeah, because those thieves are awesome. Uh, McElroy was suspected of being involved in the theft of grain, gasoline, alcohol, antiques, cattle, and hogs. <laughs> Fun. So basically, he was just a one man crime spree. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I talked to my mom about it because mom remembers, you know, <laughs> remembers when it went down. In fact, she, she considers it like, like it's the one thing that Skidmore can't escape. If you say Skidmore, especially in Missouri, people remember Ken. They, they, they don't remember anybody else, but they remember Ken. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, and and mom was saying that like he would have cows and and hogs with other people's tags on him in his on his farm, and nobody would say anything hmm. because they were afraid of the guy with good reason. When we'll talk about that as we go on. Sure. Um. Now, uh, 
These charges he managed to avoid mostly by threatening witnesses who would testify. He would often follow people or simply park in front of their houses. Uh, McElroy fathered 10 children with different women. Uh, he met his last wife, Trina McLeod, when she was 12 years old and in the eighth grade. Sicko. Yeah, he made her life hell over the next several months, multiple sexual, sexual assaults, even deciding to marry Trina. Trina's family, obviously, weren't keen on the relationship. However, after he burned down their home and shot their dog, they no longer objected to the union. Wow. Because Ken was a nice guy. Nah, uh If I was Trina's daddy, I'd be stringing him up. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah. Let somebody try to sleep with my 12-year-old daughter. Oh, no, thank you. You and I was 12, girl. Mm -hmm. Gun to the head, dead. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, so like I said, uh, Trina moved in with McElroy and his wife at the time, Alice. Uh, Ken divorced Alice to marry Trina to prevent her from testifying regarding her sexual assault, oh, uh, which no. she was the only witness to. Oh, no. Trina gave birth at 14 and dropped out of school in the ninth grade, so she was more educated than Ken. Well, that didn't take much. Uh, a little over two weeks after Trina gave birth, she and Alice both fled to Trina's parents' home. Ken tracked them down, made them come back with him. A short while later, Trina's parents went out of town, Ken burned down their house once more, and shot their new dog as well. Oh, brother. The yeah. dog didn't do I anything! I don't understand. How is this man getting away? I don't care. Why? Where the heck are the county police? That's just what? Because, this, and okay. this is why people say such bad things about Missouri rednecks. I just can't even. What in the world? Well, okay. <sighs> so here's the thing. With county sheriffs... Mm -hmm. There's no one you can call to come and be an official witness, right? They're, they they get there when they get there because, you know, they may not even be in Skidmore. They're patrolling the whole county. No, honey, I get that. And so then it comes down to he said, she said. And Ken and his attorney, a, a guy named um, McFadden, uh, Boy, a pre piece of work as well, because his, his whole comment on on Ken was that Ken paid in cash. Uh, he he never said anything when he was told not to say anything. And Mr. McFadden considered him an excellent client. Oh, well, isn't that just hunky dory? So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to have a hard time talking about this jerk and not gagging, but let me see what I can do. So some of the crimes that Ken Rex McElroy, based on Trina's story, McElroy was indicted in June of 1973 for arson, assault, and statutory rape. He was arrested, booked, arraigned, and released on $2,500 bail. Trina and her baby were both placed in, in foster care at a home in Maryville, Missouri. McElroy sat outside the foster home for hours at a time staring at it. He told the foster family that he would trade girl for girl to get his child back. Since he knew where the foster family's biological daughter went to school and what bus route she rode. Additional charges were filed against McElroy. Eventually, Trina dropped the charges, and at the time, the state could not file them on her behalf. On July 27, 1976, Skidmore Farm M for shooting weapons on Henry's property. McElroy was charged with assault with intent to kill. McElroy denied he was at the scene. As the case dragged on without a court date, Henry said McElroy had packed, parked outside his home at least 100 times. And this is where we get into 
Ken was good at finding witnesses to say he was where he said he was. Mm -hmm. Now, chances are he got those witnesses by threatening them. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, at this trial, two raccoon hunters testified that they were with McElroy uh, the day of the shooting, uh, away from Henry's property. Henry was forced to admit in court under questioning by Richard Jean McFadden, this that prince of a fella. Uh, he was an attorney out of Gallatin, Missouri, uh, that he had concealed his own petty criminal conviction from more than 30 years previous. And uh, McElroy was not convicted. Oh, boy. Because, yeah, you know, whatever this guy had done 30 years previously, eh, obviously he was the bigger criminal. I see. Well, at least things are starting to look up because now we're going to talk about the beginning of the end. So in March of 1980, one of McElroy's children got into an argument with Evelyn Sumi a clerk at the local grocery store owned by 70-year-old Ernest Bo Bowencomb and his wife, Lois. It has been alleged that this happened because the child attempted to steal some candy. After the incident, Ken began to stalk Bo and other members of the Bowencamp family. Eventually, he met Bo in the back of the store with a shotgun in hand. During the confrontation, McElroy opened fire, hitting Bo in the neck. Bo survived, and McElroy was arrested and charged with attempted murder. McElroy was was convicted at the trial with assault, but was freed on bail pending an appeal. Then he went to D&G Tavern with an M1 Garand rifle with a bayonet attached, attached and made several threats about what he would do to Bo Bowencamp. He sat with Trina and drank several beers before buying a six-pack of beer and leaving with Trina. And after all that, let's take a moment for a word from our sponsors. Amen to that. Well, Ben, I don't feel very um, much less, I, I don't feel very much less frustrated, but I definitely feel sponsored. Very good. I also feel sponsored. Awesome. So what do you think so far of Ken Rex McElroy, Krista? I think he's right up there he's with what's little... her name with what's her name Kenny. That's why he's the That's why he's the Sharon Kenny of the male world. That is definitely true. I agree. I think he definitely falls right up there with the as the Sharon Kenny of the male world. Well, it, it, the thing is, is McElroy was kind of a perfect storm. He could have only done what he did in Skidmore. I don't know, know that there's another place in the country where he could have got, gotten away with this much stuff. I don't know. Unfortunately, I think this is probably the kind of thing that does happen more than people know because of little out-of-the-way places like this. But... Well, Okay, but now there's internet. Now, like, no, yeah. Nowadays, I don't see that. Uh, nowadays, I don't see it happening. But nowadays, somebody would have killed him. I'm, I'm surprised that nobody had killed him up to this point. I mean, really, that that I did. It, once he had, as soon as you attacked that- my daughter and sexually assaulted her repeatedly. I would have waited for that sucker to fall asleep, and I would have burned his house down. I mean, you and made sure that he didn't come out of there. Take me to jail. They pro- Obviously, they probably wouldn't because they kept letting him out. So, you know. <laughs> well. Anyway, it, so go ahead. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I, he is still, still famous. Like, when I put the picture up, Yesterday, mm-hmm. to ask to, to have people guess what our su- subject is, mm-hmm. 
there's a lot of people that from St. Joe that commented on the post and were saying things like, um, uh, like one guy said his grandmother had a drink with Ken. Oh. That he, what? Okay. And, and there's something we have to, we, we, we definitely have to get straight now. There is a D&G tavern in St. Joe. Mm-hmm. It is owned by my friends, Steve and Christina Grimes. They bought it. They used to own Cafe Acoustic. And so they reopened it because the D and G is a name in St. Joe. And, and so for them to continue that legacy means something. Right. Now it's not connected with the D and G in Skidmore, okay. which may or may not be open under another name. I don't gotcha. know. I didn't look. Uh, but it, it's just definitely not connected with that D and G. So gotcha. uh, I just want to make sure that nobody thinks that that D and G has anything to do with the one in Skidmore, Missouri. All right. Uh, that being said, um, it, like I said, he was kind of a perfect storm. This time, this kind of place is the only place that a guy like Ken could have gotten away with all the stuff he did. Mm-hmm. And so at this point, after he shot Bo Bowen Camp, and after he spent time at, at, at with the with the rifle at the DNG. The town was ready to do something. Right. And so they had contacted one of the sheriffs. I don't know if he was the main sheriff or what, but Sheriff Dan Estes. Um, And now, on the morning of July 10th, 1981, um, McElroy's appeal was postponed. So while that was going on, uh, over at the Legion Hall, because of course... Small towns. Yes, Skidmore has a legion hall. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of the town, including the mayor, was meeting with Sheriff Estes. Now, uh, Nottaway County Sheriff Dan Estes, they they were talking about how to protect themselves because now they were really scared. They were scared before, but now they were really scared. Uh, And so Estes was trying to talk them basically into setting up like a neighborhood watch kind of system before he left town. But like after the meeting, he left. The folks at the Legion Hall then went to the D&D Tavern, which filled up quickly because once people knew that McElroy was there, all sorts of people came to the tavern. Mm -hmm. It was a lot busier than usual. Uh, McElroy purchased a six pack and left. Uh, he had Trina with him. Once in his truck, he looked behind him to see a rifle coming up. The truck was hit with a hail of bullets, but only two struck McElroy. No one called an ambulance, and later McElroy was pronounced dead at the scene. Which, I'm surprised these people didn't have enough Christian charity in their hearts to call for an ambulance for poor Ken. Clearly, he was shot by mistake dozens of times. <laughs> Absolutely. Oops. Actually, he was only hit twice, but still. The, now, sucky shots. Yeah. <laughs> now, over thirty witnesses were on hand when this happened, and, and and possibly almost fifty people. No one other than Trina could name anyone who fired at McElroy, and no one seemed to have any idea who killed him. And in fact, the one person that Trina saw, everybody else swore he wasn't even there. Sure. I don't know why Trina would even try to help. Because she was messed up. Uh, Sexual assault at 12, birthing a baby at 14, and being married to a... I'm sure she was a mess. Yeah. I mean... So... uh, and like I said, he was struck by two different rifle slugs from two different kinds of rifle. Uh, an investigation by the county sheriff turned up nothing, and a later federal investigation turned up no suspects as well. In a later story by local journalist Steve Boer, he said the attitude of several townspeople was that McElroy, and this is in quotes, needed killing. To this day, no one has been charged with McElroy's death. Absolutely. So, the guy who was a master of getting away with things, well, his death remains unsolved. That's right. That's how that goes. 
So, and and then I guess that's sort of the thing that if there's a bright light to this story, and I don't think there really is one, but if there is, the bright light is is that justice eventually took care of him. Um, Because I think he probably would have won his appeal just because he would have been able to get some people to back up his story, uh, especially with his his way of just uh, the idea of parking in someone's house who you've done wrong to to threaten them is just so scary to me. Like, and that is happening in nineteen seventies. That's not a real mafia to up era. 1940s, I buy that. 1930s, okay, it's kind of 20s right in there. But 1970s, it doesn't seem like it should be a thing, but it was a thing. Wow. So, so, so Krista, are you liking Mr. McElroy? Am I liking Mr. McElroy? Yeah, are, are you enjoying talking about him? Can I kick him in the nuts? Probably not. He's been dead a long time. I'm not sure there's even dust to kick at this point. What are you? What are you doing? What? No. What? No. What? Don't chew on your headphones. You already have a terrible time keeping them working. What's wrong with you? I'm sorry. She's being our Krista. It's okay. okay. I have a chewing problem. I don't don't know what to do. Get a straw. Lots of people I'm chewing it. on gum right now. Okay. Okay, so chew on your gum. If you need something else to chew on, go get a straw. I, I like that. Straws are much cheaper than headphones. All right. So, so do you want to talk about the... Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the curses get more. Absolutely. I was just trying to figure out what our child was doing. I don't so, even ask anymore. <laughs> probably really wise on your part, Dad. All right. So... <laughs> So, all of this distress and frustration, anger, definitely leaves a mark, right? We talk about that all the time, how these kinds of very extreme situations can leave a mark in the world, in the land, in a house. So, some say that all of this caused what's considered to be the curse of Skidmore. There are many who claim that Skidmore is cursed or that it is Missouri's answer to Stephen King's Castle Rock. On October 16th, 2000, Dre- Greg Dragu stomped his girlfriend, Wendy Gilwater, to death. He is currently serving life in prison. On April 11th, 2001, Brandon Perry went to put something in the shed he has never been seen again. At one point, a man convicted of performing gender reassignment surgery without a license, child pornography, and other things was suspected of the crime, but the details never panned out. Brandon Perry is still missing, and no one has been convicted of his disappearance. In December six, on December sixteenth of two thousand and four, Bobby Jo Stinnett was found de- found deceased with her baby cut out of her womb. The child was found in Malvern, Kansas, near Topeka, where the killer Lisa Montgomery had the child. Lisa was sentenced to death for the murder of Bobby Joe. Her daughter, Vicki Joe, still lives in Skidmore with her father. So, yeah, that's, see, that's where I know Skidmore from. I didn't know all of this, but I definitely remember the, you, Lisa, Mon- Lisa Montgomery and Bobby Joe Stinnett. That was a, that was a terrible, terrible tragedy. Yeah, well, uh, uh Bobby Joe Stinnett is related to Brandon Perry. That is a weird call out for sure. So he went missing and then his family member was murdered and her baby was kidnapped out of her womb. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. And the guy that they thought did it, that guy was 
a piece of work. Like, okay, so I, I, I didn't include the guy's name because he may still be alive and he may not want me to talk about the details, but I'm going to talk about the details and nobody's going to know it's him. So, here. here I'm talk about the details. No one's going to know it's him. We, I haven't mentioned his name, have I? Nope. Okay, then. So. Suspect and known are two majorly different things. Go ahead, babe. So here's the thing. The police first come across this guy mm -hmm. when he's in a hotel cutting off a man's genitals after giving him a whole bunch of painkillers to perform some form of sexual reassignment surgery. Well, after he cuts them off, the guy won't stop bleeding. Well, weirdly gee. enough. And the guy calls the police, who then arrest his doctor for not having a license to perform this surgery. <laughs> so he just lopped it off? I don't know the details of this surgery, okay? Oh, I just know really? that. So then they start investigating the guy. Yeah. And they find on his computer... Lots of child pornography. Uh -oh. Dastardly amounts of child pornography. Lots and lots of it. And as they're searching his property and they were finding all sorts of other things, mm -hmm. they, one of the things they find is a turtle claw necklace, which Brandon Perry was known to wear. I see. But it isn't identical to that necklace. So, and there was just no other, and it was buried in the dirt, and there is just no other evidence. So maybe the guy did it, maybe he didn't. It just seems unlikely because the only piece of evidence we have is that necklace. And, well, let's just say there's, in that part of the world especially, there's more than one turtle claw necklace. Sure. So, and, and that, for, for a town, for, for a farming town of 250, especially in, what, 30 years, 40, mm -hmm. that's a lot of, of, of murder and, and other bad, bad things. Murder so, man. yeah, that is. <laughs> So, like I say, a lot of people think Skidmore is cursed. Uh, some people think, uh, I, I, I saw a guy online who was convinced that it's uh, McElroy's uh, ghost that is somehow causing all of this uh, because he's upset that nobody's ever been charged in his, in his death. But, it, you wow. know, it, it just... <sighs> kind of has the vibe to a horror movie. Yeah, it definitely does. It really does. Like, like he's like still punishing the town. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it it's definitely that's why some people call it, think of it like a castle rock. Sure. So, Krista, yeah, what are your final thoughts on on all of this? Look, he'd remember to ask you for your final thoughts. He was scared to have a repeat of last week. <laughs> are you scared? <laughs> Always scared to upset my baby. Aww. Um. He's a piece of trash. Yeah, because I can't say the other one. <laughs> you want to move to 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 Skidmore? No. Would you like? That he's dead. We can't do anything. You can't do anything to him. She'll conjure up his ghost and kick it in the junk. Yeah. Cojones. But wow. Any other thoughts, like uh, on on all the the tragedy that's befallen the town since? What? Any other thoughts on the tragedies that have befallen the town since the? "Quote unquote curse of Skidmore." No, not really. All righty, it's no, not. That's okay. Something I have much to say about. That's all right. You're good. So yeah, uh, 
in 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 a lot of circles. See, I considered going with the the uh, Bobby Joe Stinnett case, but I decided against it just because I have seen that case on so many things. Right. You don't hear a lot about McElroy's case. Talked about, like I said, someone mentioned that their grandfather actually drank with him and thought he was a sweetheart. But his grandfather literally said that if he liked you, he was a pussycat. If he didn't, he was as bad or worse as he. It's been described. I bet. Which, excuse me if I don't judge someone by how they treat their drinking companions. I, I don't right. think that's... <laughs> sure. That, sure. That is not the up end of civilization. No, sure isn't. Nobody is like, well, he's a horrid father, but he treats his drinking companions great. Yep, drinking buddies are all good. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not... I guess I shouldn't judge him, but... I'm a being a bit judgy where, where he's concerned just because and, and and okay I get that the guy was a small town lawyer I get that he needs to make a living but McFadden I just I don't like him I don't like him I don't like him if McFadden hadn't been such I almost wonder if McFadden isn't related to the McFadden that was involved in the Oklahoma City bombing. bombing. The names are spelled differently. Are but, they? Okay. But I, I believe. But they, I that doesn't know that mean he it. was like from Trenton, Missouri, or something, wasn't he? Yeah. Which is up there. It's it's a very similar area, so it wouldn't have surprised me if they were related. But if the names are spelled different, that sort of makes sense. I th well, like I said, I think they are. I guess it's possible. I mean, you know, if nothing else, maybe distantly. I don't know. I just wondered. Yeah, like I said, it's, sorry. Oh, it's fun. It, it's just, it's such a. It, and, and I mean, I get it. This country, we have to have defense attorneys. We do. Sure. But man, to to defend a guy twenty times and a guy, you have to know. Is guilty. Sure. Yeah, it would, it would be a lot. I just, I'm sorry, Mike, if you listen. So, uh, but yeah, just I, if not for McFadden, McElroy would have went to jail a long time ago. Well, like you said, there's a reason for defense attorneys. So, well, hey, I think that's our show. That's pretty much our show. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks to some of my St. Joseph friends for reminding me of the McElroy case. Also, please, if you live near St. Joseph, please enjoy the new DNG that's there. While it has the same name as the Tavern Skin Word, it's absolutely not related. Hi, Christina. Hi, Steve. Uh, thanks to Bill, Paige, and Aaron. And let me separate those out for you. Bill is Bill Barrett, who does our theme music. Uh, if you need music for an occasion, if you need special music made for a podcast of your own, uh, Bill's the guy who can do that for you. Just reach out to him at Bill Barrett, B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T, at sbcglobal.net. Uh, yeah, he builds the, the guy that can do that for you. Uh, Paige, along with her own Krista, has done our logo art, partly because Paige is addicted to Canva, er, Canva and partly because Paige loves our Krista. I so, mean, it's kind of hard not to love our Krista. Pretty much. So, uh, thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Uh, you might also know Paige as Paige Elmore, the host of Reverie True Crime. If you are looking for a new true crime podcast, might I suggest her? She does a very fine job. Also, thanks to Aaron Gnurk of the Big Dumb Fun Show here locally, who continues to promote us locally. Uh, join us next week as we look into legends and myths around the world. Bye! Bye. Thank you.